It's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker. Uh, so uh, I've known Justin for quite a while now, and a, a lot of you will know him for a lot of the really kind of groundbreaking foundational work he's done in areas of various areas of Linux security. Um, and uh, you know, and he's now a CTO at Docker, and has been focusing a lot on supply chain security. It's a very hot topic. And I know he's got some super interesting thoughts to share. And so with that, I will hand over to Justin Cormack of uh, Docker. Please go ahead. Weirdly, I've not actually been to Rejects before, despite there being eight of them. And despite every time I come to KubeCon, I kind of run into Andy and, uh, and people saying how nice Rejects is. And I, I'm like, oh, yeah, why didn't I come two days earlier, like, like, like all of you lot? So uh, really nice to be here. Um, also kind of nice to be up first, given I'm slightly jet lagged, having just arrived from Europe, so it's nice to. I think originally I was on Sunday, and I was like, oh, actually, yeah, speaking first thing, it's nice. Um, as Andy said, I'm the CTO at Docker. I've been at Docker for ooh, a long time now, uh, eight, eight years or so, maybe. Um, um, I'm also on the CNCF Technical Oversight Committee, um, so involved, you know, a lot in. Um, What's going on in CNCF and the projects there, and um, I'm going to talk about a bunch of those things today. Um, yeah, so I've been involved in supply chain security at, um, for quite a few years now. Um, I uh, I wasn't originally a security person, but I uh, but I always had an interest in security, and I kind of moved in security full time for a bit at Docker some years ago, and. Um, um, and Docker's always been involved in supply chain security. We, we donated the Notary project originally many years ago to, um, to CNCF and um, really spent quite a long time discovering what the problems with that were, the, um, talking to customers about what's important to them in supply chain security. And um, obviously, you know, over the last few years, um, it, it's gone from... Uh, what's that? Uh, oh, yes, it is important to us, and uh, we, we, we need help. And so it's become a really interesting kind of important area. Um, and there's been a lot of innovation going on in the space, but, but I think it's also kind of exciting because there's still lots of work to do. It's still a really new space. Um, there's lots more people involved, so it's, it's, it's great. There's lots of ideas, collaboration, um, and... and Working together, so it's 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 really um, really nice space. Um, I'll talk about some of the things that are going on today in um, in this talk, but it, it's quite a um, narrow focus on attestations. There's lots of things I won't talk about, but I'm happy to talk about them, you know, in questions and things as well. But um, um, this this talk is really trying to kind of explain my thinking about. Um, Supply chain and why and the kind of way I think about it now from from you know really from having a lot of conversation with customers a lot of thinking about what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to talk about attestations and um, so um, an attestation like the sort of a definition is an official verification of something that is true or authentic. Um, I, I, so, um, you know, I, I put these pictures in. I, I, usually, there's a lot of supply chain talks. We talk about things like, you know, uh, tamper-proof things and medical things. I decided to go for some more kind of weird things. So there's a um, Dutch woman who makes um, artificial flowers for bees. Um, and she, um, and I, I came, came across these. They're kind, of, they're kind of quite cute. And you have to actually persuade bees quite carefully that they you know, that they look like flowers because, you know, bees have um, weird eyesight that can only see certain, they can see ultraviolet, I think. Anyway, um, and so they have these, these patterns that make them think it's a flower and then you put, you put basically put sugar in them and they uh, can actually treat them like normal flowers. Um, but they're not kind of authentically flowers. So I decided to use those as a kind of model of uh, things today. Um, you know, and so supply chain attestations are something we started having, you know, started having a while ago, and they're basically, you know, just information about the thing that you're using. So in this case, like, um, what kind of flower 
is it that the bee is sitting on? Who made it? If it's an artificial one, uh, what kind of flower is it? If it's a real flower, um, and of course, the, you know, the kind of question the bee might ask is, if it gives me honey, why do I care? But obviously, you know, we know that um, you know supply chain security is important because there are hostile actors out there. There are people who might make uh, flowers that are, you know, not not pleasant to uh, not pleasant to eat. Um, and also, you know, we kind of need to, um, you know, we've kind of learned about, you know, from, from the kind of supply chain security issues there have been that we need to understand about, like, you know, repeatability, traceability, reproducibility, understandability. We, we, we've had big security instances like SolarWinds where um, there have been direct supply chain attacks where someone has gone and modified something that, you're consuming to be hostile, you know, either to you or to downstream people from you, and so on. And so we we really have discovered that we need to know more about the objects that we're building, and so we can um, and using and consuming every day um, to build our software and to use and to deploy. Um, you know, so we actually need to understand more about you know about these flowers or whatever we you know objects that we're using need to understand what they're made from we need to understand like you know they um if much more detail about about the internals of them and so on and i think the um what one of the things that i think has become clear to me um you know, particularly just you know talking to talking to people about what they need from supply chain security is that actually this piece about understanding more about the software and understanding about its composition and um, and how it was made and how trustable it is is the kind of the most important piece for them um, and a lot of the focus. Um, you know, kind of has been on um, on um, other kind of aspects like um, like whether things have been ta you know like um, um, you know the focus on delivery. So, for, so for example, the um, original Notary project was basically an implementation of Tough, and Tough is a way of actually. Um, Getting secure software updates, sort of on an end-to-end -end process, but the it doesn't tell you anything about the software that's actually you know, you're, you know it gives you an update process, but it doesn't tell you about what the thing is that's being updated. And I think that one of the things we've learned is the most important concern people have is actually what's the thing that I'm getting, and the update process is potentially important, but the the what is it piece is really, 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 really important. It's like, well, what, you know, you've, I've got this bit of software, it's a nice secure update, but is it hostile? And so I think that's why I've really kind of started thinking, you know, a lot more about the, the attestation piece. And um, in particular, um, the Intoto project, um, which is a CNCF project, came out of originally the same team as the Tough project, um, originally NYU, um, uh, Justin Kappos' team, and uh, Santiago, who's um, at Purdue, uh, is the project leader, but it came out of um, his work with Justin Kappos. And it, it's basically, um, it, it's answering this kind of second question about, well, so what's in the stuff? How, how can I understand more about it? How can I um, understand how it was Built and how it, how it, everything about where it came from, and so essentially, it's a Intoto is really an extensible metadata standard about, um, and we'll we'll go into more detail about it. And again, it's like uh, this this quote here is really what I was saying about like, um, you know, tough is a, is a last mile security about software updates, um, and they provide integrity and authentication. But um, it's, as I said, it's possible that by the time you know you're you're updating it, it's already been compromised, and so you really need to go further back, and you need to go kind of you know back to like what was this built from? How was it built? Was the build process secure or not? And, and all those kinds of questions. And so those are the those are the kind of questions that attestations are, are there to try and 
answer. Um, to give a more kind of concrete example, I'm going to talk about um, witness from TestifySec. So, um, hello, TestifySec. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, TestifySec has a couple of projects which are all, um, they're planning to join the Intoto project as official sub projects at some point soon. Um, and so, witness is, um, you know, was, I think, probably the first, um, you know, the, the first kind of um, open source project about collecting attestations. And it's a, it's a good project to look at to understand, like, um, you know, what you can do easily. It's a, it's a great, um, you know, it's a great starting point. It's got, it's pluggable and it's got all sorts of things. So, and it gives you an idea of, you know, what you can do with attestations um, and as well as concrete code for actually doing the, that with attestations. So, it's got a whole set of um, attesters, um, which it kind of in a in a sort of sequence they start with. Um, you have a series of um, you have a series of steps in, in the Intoto model of like what what happened to the things in the supply chain, and um, you can go if you're thinking about like how you how you build a piece of software. There's a, there's a lot of stages of building software. Um, at the moment, um, Witness is mainly about collecting information around um, the around the build process. There's actually work in Intoto about going even further back into like, um, and I think these things are also kind of interesting about like what happened even before that. So you know, the process of building software starts with you know a blank. A blank text editor, and um, you start to write some code, and you can potentially even make attestations about that process. And there's some, there is some work on that as, as well, and like the really what's happening on the developer workstation, and like what's happening when you actually write code, which is kind of interesting too. We're not going to talk about that so much today, but um, Witness is mainly at the moment has attesters around the um, the build process, and so if you think about something like you know, you're going through something like GitHub Actions or Circle CI, and you want to, um, or any of the, you know, GitLab or anything like that, and you want to, you have a set of steps that your software goes through, and you want to collect information to demonstrate that it went through those steps. Um, we'll talk about exactly how that gives you kind of reassurance later. But so, um, first of all, there's these pre-material testers, like where did the step run? So it ran in AWS or GitLab, like this is, it's, you know, if you want to understand, like, um, you know, is this the official version of the software that was built in the official process, you need, you know, well, the official process is to, we, we build our software in GitLab, and so you want to make sure it was running GitLab, so there's a testers for that. There's material, so what files did this use, what was the source code that this was built from, so basically file hashes of, the source files. Um, there's execution attesters, like um, what happened when the build process ran. So, um, uh, um, Witness has a ptrace framework that will give you, tell you like what the system calls that happened while the build was happening. So you can see, like, um, what, what exactly went on, what, where the network was, you know, what happened on the network, and what happened in the, to the file system. And then you can use you can see in, from the file system ptrace, you can see what files were created during the build, and then you can look at the hashes of those, so those are your output files. Um, and then what final artifacts were created, so say you're building a container, um, you, you take a bunch of the files and you package them up into this container, so you can attest for the, the hash of the container. So um, you can see that there's a, you know, that you can, these are, these are, the, these are the kind of, Groups of attesters that come with Witness now, but you can add you can add kind of more, and you can kind of see that kind of model of um, you know thinking about like what what happened, um, how do I record this, um, and using that to get reassurance. So the data model for Intoto is this set of what they call links, which are form a chain, a supply chain, um, and each one basically is a, um, you know, you take, you take a hash, um, 
you say what the action was, and then there's an output, you know, an output hash. Um, you know, so what came in, what did I do, what came out, and then the stuff that came out is the input to the next step in the supply chain. Um, so there's a kind of sequence of hash chain, and we'll talk about um, we'll talk about what you expect from the um, from that le the layout piece late, later on. So you can so that's the kind of model of that. So kind of more abstractly, there's a predicate relation between subject and an object. Again, input hash, output hash. So it's a Merkle tree. Um, you can also, I mean, you also think of, you know, we've, we end up using Merkle trees in an awful lot of security stuff. It's actually the really powerful abstraction. Um, Git is a Merkle tree, and you can think of these things as really looking a bit like a commit. There's an, imp there's a previous input state, there's a new state, and there's a commit that joins them together. So it's again the same structure from hashes to hashes. Um, OCI registries are also basically Merkle trees. Um, um, you know, they, again, they have this, the same structure of, um, of hashes and documents that join them together. Um, and um, they tend to be used less like a relation at the moment, but that's kind of just a, uh, we'll talk about that more later. But, um, but this, this structure is really, um, you know, very sort of simple, simple structure in a way, once you think of it as like input, um, what I'm did, output, um, hash, hash, tree, um, or, or DAG. Um, that was actually, that was great, this picture I put here because I was reading on the plane, there was this great article about um, a, a um, stolen painting and the weird history it went through. It's in the FT, I highly recommend it. Um, but they said this painting was stolen and resold and um, a large number of times since it disappeared in Poland in the First World War, I think, or oh, Second World War, I think. No, Second World, yeah. And it kept reappearing in various places and being sold and having this very murky provenance and weird um, sort of legal status where in some countries if you own something long enough it becomes yours, even if it was stolen, but in other countries that's not true and people kind of didn't say where it came from and ignored the fact it had a museum stamp on the back of it from a museum who had a, a, um, very complicated kind of, you know, this kind of set of steps that things go through in their lifetime. Um, you know, there's, as we said, like, there's an expectations, you have an expectation that your source code starts, you know, we, we keep our source code for this project in GitHub, we build it with GitHub Actions, and then we push it into this registry, and that's where you consume it from. It's these expectations, expected steps that you, that you want to trace in order to understand if this is really the thing you think it should be. So, you know, concretely, like uh, the Docker official images, we um, we, ha we keep the source code for them in um, github.com slash docker library, the github org. Um, we build them in our AWS account. We use the Docker files in the, in the base repo as the instructions to build them. And then we push them to Docker Hub or you can consume them from other places. And that's our kind of documented process. And that's what we want to attest to. And then the question is, how can you trust this attestation? Because obviously, um, if someone was trying to fake this, they might just say, this is exactly what happened. I, it went through this process. And it's like, how do you know? Um, often, like, signatures are d discussed as, as a way of um, helping this. But I think one of the things about signatures are often, like, the, the way in which signatures are used is usually like a person signs something saying, yeah, this is good. I, Justin says, I, you know, I, I can sign a container and say, I built, you know, this is, this is good. This is the Docker official image for Alpine. Or the, probably the, the, the team would sign it. But how do you, you know, as a person, how do I know what went on in the computer? Like I can kind of assume that it went through the right process, but even I don't really know. And computers are kind of very opaque to us. And so part of the thing is really to get away from like 
person thinks the process was good, because like in SolarWinds, person thought the process was probably OK. Um, but, and to really get inside with these attestations and see what really went on inside the computer. And that's kind of hard in some ways, but easy in other ways. And we kind of talk about how this works. It's really about evidence. You know, when you're, you know, how do you trust evidence? Can you check it? If you imagine a court case where, or a kind of retro where you're trying to understand, like, is this thing, is this piece of software good? Um, you want to collect a lot of evidence that all points in the same direction, gives you reassurance, um, and you want to look at the things that are anomalous, um, see if they're explainable or an indication of compromise, and um, look for a pattern of evidence re reinforcing that things were doing what was expected. So if you think about like a build process or the kind of things that we do when we're, when we're building software, sometimes um, you can check things ex post. You can, like, um, um, I put this picture in because I like that. This is, these, are, these are computers. These are, this is the Women's Army Corps uh, doing their computations for the Manhattan Project. Um, um, you know, you can check your calculations. Like, if, it, if, it's, if it's a, you know, if it's something, a piece of, you know, piece of math, you can, you can check it. And it might take you a long time to check it, but that, you've got that ability. And you can do that with some bits of code, and that's actually kind of useful sometimes. So reproducible builds are a great example. It's like, uh, so if you have a, a reproducible build process, then you can go and try it yourself and see if it gets the same output. And it's like, then you can be quite fairly confident that that was, that was the set of inputs that were used, and you got those outputs, and you'd be fairly happy. It might take a long time, and um, you might really want to build a process of you know, multiple independent builders and people checking. Um, the Persia project that Jay Frog and us are doing is one of, that's one of his outputs. It, it, one of his aims is to have a, you know, a set of um, multiple trusted builders to check, check um, things. I think reproducible builds have been hard, and people have um, you know, kind of gradually been building up to doing that. But I think it's a, it's a really valuable piece of tech that can help you understand and verify and, and you know, do the go back and check it thing. You can often, like if, if it's not a, necessarily a bill, but it's some other part of a process that you want to check, sometimes those things are reproducible. Sometimes you can, um, you know, if you, you want to check, um, you know, someone's given you an S-bomb, you want to, and it came out of, um, you know, out of a particular S-bomb generation program, you can rerun that if you have the same data set, the same version of the code, and you can, so sometimes there's a lot of, there's additional metadata that's reproducible. Sometimes you need to make sure you have the, the state of the input of the code at the right time as well, so um, data, keeping, you know, keeping all the data that you use to actually do um, the things you want to check, you know, keeping them in a in a data store so you can reproduce it is kind of helpful as well. Um, but some things are kind of hard to check. Um, we we spent a bit of time, actually, Ilya, who's here, did this work a while ago, we, and we kind of didn't quite finish it, and we should release, we should release the bits we did, actually, um, but talk to Ilya about this. But we, um, we spent a bunch of time checking, like, if, um, you know, for, for Docker official images, most, many of the packages in them come from upstream Linux distros, and we're like, well, if you say I installed these packages, how can I go back and check it uh, from the package manager? And it's kind of doable. It's kind of um, um, bits of it are easy, bits of it, are, well, not easy, but difficult. Um, Things like post install scripts and package managers are really annoying because they just run arbitrary code and you don't really know what they output. But actually, in practice, they do a more limited range of things and you can run them once and, and see what, they, what kind of thing they do. Um, but you can actually spend a bunch of time working out, like, yes, that SBOM does correspond to the packages that were installed. Um, I'm, I've been talking too much. I'm going to, it's got five minutes. Uh, so that, that's one thing. I talked to you about that. Um, OIDC is really valuable. So 
many endpoints give you an OATC output that tells you a lot of things about the code. So GitHub Actions is a good one. You can get a signed state JWT from GitHub that tells you repo, branch, hash. Uh, gives you a lot of confidence about that something happened in GitHub Actions. Uh, how do we record this? So this is something that we've been working on with Open PubKey, which is a new open source project from Docker and Bastion Zero that we launched a few weeks ago. Um, open PubKey is a, um, there's a bunch of stuff on it on the, in the repo, but it takes, it turns JWTs from bearer tokens into certificates by binding a public, uh, public key into them. Um, and you can then sign with this public key to demonstrate that you had possession of the JWT. Um, and so you can capture that information in JWT in a way that um, you can sign it and it can't just be copied by someone else who had access to it. Some people being nervous about sharing a full JWT, so we added a zero knowledge proof framework um, around this so you could prove that you had possession of bits of the JWT that had the the interesting metadata from that JWT. Um, I won't, this is the architecture really, I, I'm not gonna go through that. Um, there's more information about open PubKey there, but so we, we, we're basically using it to um, record the, the um, validated JWT so you can validate that, it, that something went through any kind of process that gives you no IDC um, basically what's now a certificate from um, there. So that's kind of cool. Um, TPMs also give you this kind of structure of um, signed attestations of what code was running, which are pretty cool. People are not using them much and it's kind of messy, um, but there's a lot of opportunity, I think, to um, use these as well to demonstrate, like, this is the code that I ran in order to do this build and, um, again, get a signed attestation from, for example, AWS Nitro will give you signed attestations, um, including the whole kernel. Then we have an area that, um, you know, how do we know what the process should have been? You know, you know I, t I told you what the Docker official image process is, but um, actually, like, how do I tell you that officially? So, um, Intoto has a concept of the layout for this. This is like what should happen, and it's signed, and you can distribute those again through TUF, which is our plan for the Docker official image work. Um, when you have attestations, you have lots of data. How do you query it? You can look, you can query the documents and use a kind of document focused approach, both Docker internally with uh, Docker Scout and TestifySec with Archivista have actually built a kind of graph database model that you can sit and run and queries on. So Docker Scout is, we use data log, and for example, whenever anything changes, you can basically, um, you can basically get a, chain, a notification of any policy violation or that's changed when you change your data. Both of them have GraphQL APIs. I think there's a lot of interesting standardization work in that. Um, overall, this is a really zero trust approach, you don't trust an object because of what it is, you trust it because of the attestations and the information in that. Um, and so it really fits with the whole kind of zero trust model we've been getting elsewhere. Um, and so overall, I think like evidence of what supply chain processes are is really important. Attestations are a way of basically collecting this evidence um, and building out this infrastructure. And I think this is really kind of core structural way that we can help understand like the questions that the, really the customers have been asking about is you know, what, what actually is in this code that I've got from somewhere else? You know, what are the ways I can verify it? Um, and you can, as well as telling people what's in it, um, I think this process of how much can you verify the information you've got is the really key thing because um, otherwise the installations could be faked as much as the, the code you're getting. So you need to be able to have ways to add this extra trust into and verification layer into, into it. And so that's, I think this is really the way I've been sort of thinking about how, how this stuff should work. This is all kind of really you know, uh, I think we're very early in this journey. I think we're still um, exploring it. I think that, um, you know, but I think this is really where, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the direction that really helps answer the questions that people people are really asking. Goes. 
Thanks very much. Hi, we have some minutes. If anyone has questions for Justin. You mentioned this project in Tata, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe I missed it. Uh, are you involved in it, like a maintainer? Or? No, I'm not a maintainer. Okay, you just mentioned no, it. But I, I mean, I've, I've, um, I, I've been, you know, kind of working with them for a long time. Um, I did the CNCF review for incubation for it, and I've known that because I've worked with the tough team who who have a lot of overlap. I've been working with them for for many years on this because we we started working with the mm -hmm. tough team uh, like eight, eight years ago or something like that. So, so I've kind of been involved in it in it growing up and coming through CNCF. And, and right. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask also uh, maybe you know where the name comes from or in Tato? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I, I'm actually not sure. I'm actually not sure. I think the wholeness of it, but it's also weirdly, randomly, the name of a kitchen supply store in the UK. Um, but I don't think it's come from that. I was going down the street once in Cambridge, and I was like, there's a shop called Intoto here. <laughs> um, OK, thanks. Probably need to ask the uh, creators of the project. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you, you talked about a lot of, like, you know, attestation, uh, like what it will look like, and things like that. but when you are doing attestation, like who attests the software that's doing attestation? Yeah, and so where I mean, does it stop? The, you know, the, 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 that's the kind of you know, there's a, a there's this whole the whole kind of concept of the software factory that's come from the U.S. Department of Defense model. Like, you have to do this for everything, and yes, there's a there's a kind of circularity problem that you've got to start with something that you trust, but there's a there's, a, there's actually a bunch of techniques you can use to kind of um, potentially bootstrap, but I think um, you know, they, they, um, and there's, but, but you want to try, in, in, in theory, in an ideal world, you want to try and um, you want to try and do this kind of almost recursively for everything, but you obviously have to start with something, um, but. It's, it's, it is a difficult it is a difficult problem the, the bootstrap problem with this and um, but being able to I mean being able to reproduce the whole th the whole of your entire fa factory is actually really important in the end because you've got to build it up from like do I have a trusted pipeline do, does the software that do I trust the software that deploys the pipeline you know there's a lot that, you know I think we, we have to kind of add trust throughout this whole thing um, but it, it is it is definitely a you know kind of bootstrapping problem as well and so there's there's definitely um, you know there's definitely work work to do to try and do that but I mean I think a lot of it's not about is it right it's about what degree of trust do I have and you know you can we have external things you know we mostly trust like Debian and Red Hat to produce Good base software that we then can bootstrap the next piece off, and so on. So, it's not like you don't have to have all the evidence for everything. And I think there isn't even a fixed. I don't think there's a fixed set of attestations evidence that you need. It's like the more things you have the, that you can verify, the, the happier you are, and the more likely you are to catch any issues. And so, you know, you don't have to like have a perfect system to get started. Uh, uh, to to follow up on that, uh, like you mentioned about TPMs, right? So if we assume for any computing like uh, distributed system, if we assume like machine, like a like a computer being a single unit of compute, and then you you attest that using TPM, and then you extend it to v VMs, and then VMs do the same thing inside, and then you know can you know we can have some system like that maybe I don't know. Yeah, I mean I think you know I think that. Um, I mean, I think there's, you know, there are, there are also, I mean, I think that part of the thing about the OIDC thing and why it's so interesting is, like, there are people we trust. Like, you generally trust your cloud provider. You, gen you generally trust, um, you know, GitHub Action, for example. You, 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 if these things were, you know, you know that these people have strong security teams who are working on stuff, and if they're compromised, 
you could pretend, you know, you probably hear about it and you, pro you can kind of work, work backwards if there was an issue. But in general, you've got a lot of trust in, in certain things behaving the way they say they're going to. And I think that's, that's why the, I think the OIDC kind of JWT attestation stuff is really useful because you can take, you can say, there are, there, are these, there are these parts of the process I trust and I can use that trust to bootstrap or trust. Um, and, and, and I can be happy that my thing's going through that. Because if you don't trust your cloud provider, then why, you know, why are you using them in the first place? It's like, if you think they're gonna kind of compromise, they're gonna be the source of compromise. So, so I think there's a lot, you know, I think part of it is like taking the bits where we have got trust and using that to bootstrap kind of more of a chain across everywhere else. And, and I think that we're seeing more and more of kind of, you know, OIDC and things being used as a, um, as a way to do things like um, cross cloud authentication, like get, get your GitHub Actions to um, run some code in, in AWS because you, you trust that process. And so I think we're tying more of these things together like that anyway. Okay. Sorry, we have more time for questions. If anyone wants to meet Justin outside, um, sorry, we have to move on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Justin.